What is a dialectical synthesis? This is a good question, and definitely there is a lot that could be gained and gleaned from such a question. It would seem to me that if we're thinking about Hegelian philosophy, or at least what came out of the Hegelian tradition, we're able to realize a notion of synthesis. And according to Hegel, there is the notion of a dialectical synthesis, where you have the thesis, which you could say is one side of an equation. Then you have the antithesis, which is literally the opposite or other side of the equation. And then you have the synthesis. And the synthesis is literally putting these two arguments, the antithesis and thesis, together to form a more perfect whole. And so you might know in philosophy the notion of the dialectic, which is often two opposing points of view. And just so you're aware, if you haven't seen this concept, the dialectic is, the point of the dialectic is to understand two opposing views and to basically argue both views in order to understand the bigger picture better. Now, with thinking about the synthesis, this notion as postulated by Hegel, or at least Hegelian philosophy, and that is posited through the history of philosophy, we are left with a very interesting idea, which is that you can take two conflicting points of view, so I'll use myself as an example, my view, which could be on anything in the world, and someone else's view, which may be opposing, contrasting, or at least conflicting. And the idea is for me to understand my view and their view, and to be able to bring it together, to be able to make a more perfect whole. And so, it's interesting thinking about the synthesis, and this idea has been propounded a little bit more by Daniel Schmachtenberger, who is a philosopher and thinker and intellectual who I've seen on YouTube, and who is very interesting. And he sees the dialectical synthesis with which I'm talking about as being a basis for empathy and for understanding opposing points of views and for understanding things that require a more macro view. And so the reason why this is very interesting is because we can definitely be empathetic by challenging our own points of view. Often this is a point in skepticism, the idea that I would challenge my own views in order to understand opposing views, and that I would study and accept different views that I see in the world. And Spockenberger's idea is that the reason why this is empathetic and rigorous is because it helps us to understand opposing viewpoints. And that is definitely a good way of creating peace. Now I've thought about these ideas for a long time, for quite a while actually, and especially notions regarding synthesis and taking opposing viewpoints. And it seems that in my own practice, as I said, I use myself as an example, I may have my own view, say on materialist science or on philosophy itself or on metaphysics, ontology. I might have a view of something specific and someone else may have an opposing view. So there are examples of this. I myself identify as agnostic in most of my views, if not all of my views. And agnosticism, the point of agnosticism, is to give us the opportunity to understand things at a neutral level, a neutral explanation. But you might have someone who is very religious and very committed to a certain idea and metaphysics of the world, namely of which deals with uh, the metaphysics of reality itself, which includes God, the nature of good and evil, etc. And I may find myself clashing with their views. And so what I would try to do is understand the religious viewpoint in order to understand how my materialist science, scientific views, or at least influenced by those views, might benefit from just understanding different concepts. Whether I accept them as true is another matter. The point of the synthesis isn't necessarily to always see it as true, but the goal is to at least understand an opposing viewpoint. Now I'll admit, I'm not religious, and yet I'm interested in different viewpoints, and so it's very interesting for me to regard other viewpoints and try to understand them. And what is interesting is that I don't see myself as being necessarily like completely scientific in all of my views, which is why it is it pays to listen to different views. But I'll use another example, I'll flip it. We could come from my agnostic perspective, and I could be talking with someone who is much more intense, specifically with materialism. And what I would do with my neutrality is attempt to understand their perspective 
of materialist science, which I know that I have a strong reaction to, because I don't think that materialism accounts for everything in the universe. That would at least be the argument of it. But I would still nonetheless be interested in looking at the claims, in looking at what actually exists. There are many examples of places where we could use a synthesis. So whether we're talking about political views, which might literally fall on a different side of the spectrum, on literally a completely opposite side of the spectrum, maybe in terms of religious versus non-religious views, or even atheism, at the very least agnosticism. We definitely experience this in terms of how we organize society, in terms of capital capitalism or more socialist programs. And these are all very important claims, but you can do this in terms of even just philosophical points. So I might argue for an agnostic perspective, but I would also be very much moved, as I've been saying, to re understand arguments related to, I would describe, commitments. People that are committed in their views. And that would be very interesting for me to understand and experience. So while I may be a little bit more skeptical and agnostic and I don't necessarily commit, I would be very interested in seeing opposite perspectives where people commit, where they have very strong views. And even if we're talking about something like metaphysics, which is a little bit more loose and abstract, we could still nonetheless come to a conclusion. Now, I very much like the idea of synthesis. And the reason why it's always appealed to me is because I think that it is very important to understand opposing views. I want to understand different views. I don't want my view to become monolithic and I want to understand different points of views. And I think that Schmachtenberger's approach is very interesting with thinking about how we can understand different perspectives and different ways of viewing the world. I don't want my perspective to be monolithic. I don't want to impose it. There might be instances where I want to have a stronger view, but even then, I definitely want to understand the complexity of the world and allow myself to synthesize differing views. And you can do this in an abstract way, you can do this by looking at different arguments in philosophical history or in the history of philosophy, and you can see where different views spring up and where you can synthesize them. And this was the idea of the dialectic. The idea was to understand different arguments. And in my view, it also helps us understand different perspectives. And I do think that one of the benefits of it is being able to be more empathetic and understanding of the world at large and just how massive the world actually is. I'm Phoenix. I hope you enjoyed this discussion on an idea of synthesis and dialectical synthesis specifically, and I hope that you find it interesting. I'm Phoenix. There will be much more videos to come. And yeah, I will see you next time. Thank you for watching.